So if you're Jamaican like me, then you would be familiar with an aki tree. After all, aki, which is our national fruit, comes from this tree. And we absolutely love to pair aki fruit with saltfish to create our mouth-watering national dish, aki and saltfish. But how many of you are aware that there is so much more to Jamaica's aki tree? Because it's actually a multi-purpose tree that has numerous other important uses, including its use in ethnomedicine to treat a wide range of maladies. A word of caution though for our viewers and subscribers who are not familiar with this tree, because the fruit of this tree can be toxic if it is not used properly. So make sure to watch until the end to learn more about same. Anyways guys, keep watching as we explore the medicinal uses and other uses of this amazing and very versatile tree. You are now looking at a tree that has the botanical name Blahia sapida. We Jamaicans commonly refer to it as an aki tree. In other parts of the world it is also commonly referred to as an aki tree but it also has other common names in different languages. It's a part of the Sapinda CE plant family and this family has over 1800 species of plants. If you are familiar with a lychee tree which is this tree it's also a part of the Sapinda CE plant family so this would make them related. The genus is called Blahia. Now in terms of the origin, it's native to tropical West Africa, but it was introduced to Jamaica and other tropical and subtropical regions. In Jamaica, aki trees can be found growing wildly, organically and abundantly all over the island. So it's quite common to see them growing in people's yards, along roadsides and in other green spaces. In terms of its characteristics, it can grow to a height of about 30 feet tall. These are the leaves of the tree. As you can see, they are compound leaves, meaning that they are formed from several smaller leaves or leaflets, which are all joined to one stem. As you can also see, these leaves are oval in shape and they are alternately arranged on the stem. This is the bark of a young tree and this is the bark of a mature tree. This is what the fruit looks like when it is very young. This is what it looks like at the next stage of maturity and this is what it looks like at full maturity. So as you can see the fruit is slightly three lobed and it is contained in a pod which splits open at full maturity, revealing three shiny seeds, and each of these seeds are attached to a creamish yellow aril, which is this part. Aki trees are mostly propagated by seed, but they can also be propagated by cuttings. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Aki, such as who brought it to Jamaica, how it was introduced here, and the health benefits and nutritive value of its fruits, also how to prepare the aril before you eat them, then I did another video on the latter in the past. So to access same, please click on the link above. And if you're not seeing that link, then there's another one in the description below. All parts of the tree have medicinal properties. And in ethnomedicine, the parts of the tree that people use include the bark, twigs, the sap from terminal buds, also the leaves, seeds, and fruits. And as I had mentioned before, the trees use to treat a wide range of ailments. So to treat a bad headache, it is said that people in some cultures take the young leaves and crush them, and then they apply this on their foreheads. People also use acupods to make a poultice, which is used to treat skin infections, ringworm, and liver spots. And they use the leaves to make tea, which they take internally to treat colds, the flu, 
and mucus congestion. They also add lime or lemon juice to this tea and when it is prepared in this way it is said to be useful for asthma. It is said that some people combine the leaf tea with salt and use it externally as a mouthwash for pyrrhea and other gum problems. Now in Benin it is said that people use different parts of the tree to treat numerous maladies. For example, they use the leaves to treat fever and vertigo, the twigs to treat hepatitis, cirrhosis and amygdalitis. And it is said that people in that culture also incinerate the pods so that they can become ashes. Then they use the ashes to wash their heads to help them to get rid of head lice. For a decaying tooth, it is said that they either crush the seeds with salt and apply this topically to the problematic tooth or they crush the dried bark and apply it to the tooth. To treat Whitlow, which is a very painful and infectious viral disease of the thumb and fingertips, it is said that they crush roasted seeds with palm kernel oil and apply it to the affected finger. For a scorpion or snake bite, it is said that they crush the dried bark until it turns to powder, then they add salt to it and place this on the affected area. They also eat it as a part of the treatment. For burns, they take the bark juice and mix it with honey, then they apply it to the affected area. To treat a fracture, it is said that they massage macerated leaves on the fractured limb and for eye issues, they soak the bark in water and use it to wash their eyes. And these are just some of the numerous ways in which people in Benin use the tree medicinally. In some cultures, people use the leaf and bark tea for stomach problems, intercostal pain, water retention, dysentery and diarrhea. In Ghana, it is said that the ground bark with ground capsicum pepper is rubbed on the body as a stimulant and that in that part of Africa, people also put the pulp of ground leafy twigs on their foreheads to relieve themselves from migraines. In other parts of Africa, it is said that the ground leaves are made into a paste along with plant salts and used externally to treat yaws and ulcers. In the Ivory Coast, the plant is said to be useful for treating yellow fever. It is also said that the people there use it in their traditional medicine to treat epilepsy and water retention and they use it as a laxative and a diuretic. In Ghana, it is said that the people there use the seeds to treat nausea and vomiting. In Togo, it is said that the bark or fruit wall decoction is used topically to treat wounds and that the fruit pulp is useful for whitlow. For snake bites and scorpion bites, it is said that the pounded bark is useful and that Pounded seeds are used to treat stomach issues. Also in Brazil, it is said that people use the aqueous seed extract to help rid the body of parasites. So the tree is used as an ornamental tree and a shade tree. It is also used for erosion control. The fruits aril is edible. Some people consume it raw and some have it cooked. In Jamaica, we use the branches of the tree as a fly repellent. And we do this by cutting a small branch from the tree and placing it on our kitchen counters, kitchen floors, or on our dining tables. The seeds produce oil that is used to make soap. The seeds are also used to make ink. The flowers are used to make perfume. The immature pods are used to make a soap that is used as a laundry detergent. The bark, 
seeds and pods are dried and made into powder and is said to be used as a poison for fish to make them easier to catch and people mostly use the wood to make furniture and for light construction but sometimes they use it for other things for example to make firewood and charcoal also for handcrafts boxes crates and paddles among other things the arils are poisonous when unripe or when overly ripe the aril has something called a pink rafi that attaches the aril to the seed it's toxic and must be completely removed before the aril is eaten that's it for now guys for your own benefit and safety please do your own research and see you in the next video